All right, so we are back. And today I have to talk about the Logan Paul versus Dylan Dennis fight. And notice I say I have to talk about it. I don't really want to talk about it because quite frankly, this fight was a train wreck. This was maybe one of the worst things that could have happened to influencer boxing is watching this fight and trying to justify influencer boxing as a serious thing because one of the two participants in said fight took it very seriously and one absolutely did in this video i want to explain why logan paul is not the issue here and there's a reason why dylan dennis didn't win this fight didn't try to win this fight and in my opinion should never ever come back to influencer boxing so let's break it down dylan dennis versus logan paul and why this fight will be remembered in the history books like a shit stain on the tidy whitey underwear of influencer boxing but the real underdog you should be paying attention to isn't dylan it's the sponsor of today's video underdog fantasy underdog fantasy is the best and easiest way to play fantasy sports and whether it's season long drafts or underdogs fantasy pick them they make it simple to get in on all the action in your favorite sports whether it's nfl whether it's nba whether it's hockey baseball whatever underdog fantasy has you covered let's talk about some pick -ems because when you use code wade you're going to get a deposit match up to 500 dollars when you start and you could use that 500 on playing the pick -em games with underdog it's real simple you go higher or lower on your favorite or least favorite player stats and you can win up to 20 times your money in one night and again it's super simple on the website or the app on your phone you pick between two and five players fill out your pick them entry get every pick right and you're taking home some of that sweet sweet cash and once again when you use code wade you're going to receive up to 500 dollars in deposit matches so you deposit 50 you're going to get 50 matched 100 100 matched and so on and so forth but in case you needed help getting started or wanted to see what it looked like here are my picks for this week i'm going Derek carr higher than 0.5 total yards yes that's a nice easy layup but then it becomes more difficult tyreek hill lower the 98.5 receiving yards Jalen Hurts lower than 257.5 passing yards and Travis Kelsey lower than 81.5 receiving yards I'm expecting a low yardage week in the NFL but those are just my picks you can make yours at underdog fantasy once again thank you to underdog for sponsoring this video and also to play underdog fantasy you do need to be of legal age and please do so responsibly once again thank you to underdog for sponsoring this video and now let's get back into the break so like i said dylan dennis and logan paul will be remembered for a very long time but not for a very good reason what do i mean the breakdown let's go all right so saturday night we were treated to in my opinion a riches of talent in the influencer boxing scene for the prime card everything was stacked hype was built on this fight card being one of the biggest of all time in our scene and to be honest the number of people that watched this event proved that it was the biggest in our scene at a rumored 1.3 million pay-per-view buy rate for the card that had the biggest names that made the most sense people were tuning in but one of the big reasons people were tuning in let's be honest was because of the co-main event or the second main event the main main i don't know what you want to call it but logan paul versus dylan dennis and quite frankly dylan dennis's ability to sell this fight i will give him credit like i have continually in the build-up to this fight dylan dennis got a ton of people watching this whether it was the mma community the general community all his appearances on all different talk shows and podcasts and of course his social media campaign against logan paul's fiance people were buzzing and credit to dylan rightfully so he was creating a lot of it a lot of it predicated on things that weren't fighting but also the fact that dylan said he was going to knock logan out he was going to finish logan he was gonna end logan's entire run retire him there was a lot of things said about what he would do in the fight and that is where i come to the point that we need to talk about because as we go through this fight there's a lot of good and even on dylan's end there's some things that i thought he did well and was going to follow up on and just fucking didn't but also on the other side of things logan paul came into this fight not wanting to do a ton of press of course obviously because of what was happening in the whole legal situation suing not suing things that i didn't necessarily agree with on his side but also wanted to see what logan looked like in the ring and again on the night one man delivered and one man didn't one man wanted to win and one man didn't logan came into this fight taking it seriously and dylan didn't and that's a big point that we're going to come back to over and over but as the fight started 
you saw from Logan's end the things that I'm going to compliment him on, which is that he was switched on. His jab was fast. A guy that we know picked up this sport pretty quickly when he started, but to a degree is kind of plateaued in learning this sport or learning the fundamentals behind this sport and mainly relying on his athletic ability, his quick twitch muscle fiber, his size, and again, just his ingrained instincts in a ring that allows him to get away with not being as technically sound. And especially in this fight, because he could have walked out there with no mouth piece him with no gloves on and one hand tied behind his back and still would have outboxed Dylan Dennis. And that was kind of evident from the first bell because while Dylan came out with a good high guard and walked forward and looked like he wanted to implement somewhat of a game plan to gas Logan Paul out by just being in Logan's face and making Logan throw volume. What he didn't prepare for was, well, everything about the fight itself. There was no coach, no camp, no attention to detail in the boxing ring, but what he didn't prepare for with Logan is that Logan was wanting to throw volume. Logan invited that pressure so that he could get off a ton of shots that weren't necessarily super powerful, but that were landing and scoring. And Logan was, like I said, landing a ton of shots in his first round, even into the second to the third to fourth, fifth. We, we saw all of this throughout the fight, but it was mainly predicated upon his jab. Logan was very quick with his lead hand and Yes, the holes that we've seen in Logan, and I said before the fight that a lot of people got upset at me for, were still there. Logan does look relatively the same. And I could sit here and nitpick about him continually throwing the right hand with no legs and only arm punching and him still being a little clunky and him still not being able to put combinations together in a way that does have him sit down on power shots because yes the flippy jab and the flick jab is great but it would be even greater with feet set and a right hand behind it versus the baseball pitch that logan continues to throw and did in this fight as well but there's also a lot of good things that logan does here like again at the start of the fight him working his jab and it's not just upstairs it's to the body as well and he's making dylan again a little hesitant about engaging with him because he's throwing so much volume and because well on the other side of things dylan is trying to play Mr. Too Cool for school. Because in the first couple of rounds, I would have given you that Dylan Dennis was trying to gas Logan out by just going high guard and walking into range and not really posing a threat to Logan. Like there are points in this fight where Logan throws a combination, his hands drop to his sides. He's still in range. Dylan just stands there with his high guard, unwilling to counter back, potentially off the fear that Logan's gonna pull and throw behind it and hurt Dylan with a shot. Or again, just to not show any sort of effort because we're playing the, if I don't try, then I'm cooler than you game. The kids in fucking sixth grade do on the playground because trying to do anything is not cool. It's better to just not and then point at the actual tryhards and laugh. This is the shit that baffles me because like I said, in the first three rounds, I'll give that to Dylan that, okay, you're trying to gas Logan out, but then at some point you have to try you have to and, and and i get so upset because i know dylan is a decent enough fighter i know that he's world class as a jiu-jitsu practitioner i know he knows how to fight so it wasn't him just not having the equipment to go and box at least not against logan paul who we saw in this fight wasn't the greatest technically he just does what he does better than he did it two years ago but dylan wasn't even attempting to engage him for most of the fight and i don't want to get too far off topic with this because i do want to give logan his credit like Again, there was one guy that was trying here, and it was Logan. He was throwing punches. He was being creative with some of the combinations. And again, he was showing a better gas tank than I thought he'd have, to be fair. He didn't really have to do much defensively, but he was throwing a lot of punches in combinations. There were times where I saw some creativity out of his head movement, right? When Dylan did finally let a shot go, and Logan would slip underneath it, try to bang the lead uppercut or the backhand. And Logan still does the thing where he's jab, jab heavy on his lead leg. So his right hand, when it comes out, he's still on his lead leg and he doesn't get that twist on the back leg. So he's still reaching with a lot of stuff. But again, it was landing and he wasn't getting punished for it. So why the fuck would you stop? But then as the fight goes on, it starts to, like I said, become more clear that Dylan is in there to survive, get paid and go back to MMA versus actually try. And what we're going to talk about next, potentially open himself up to being hit hard and open himself up to potentially being hurt by Logan Paul and being clowned for it. I have my suspicions about what Dylan's actual motives were here. I don't think he ever came in to win this fight. I think it was, let's do this. Let's make some money. Show Logan he couldn't knock me out because I'm not willing to engage him and go back to MMA being like, yeah, they couldn't knock me out over there. I'm still a real fighter because potentially in his mind, if he actually tries to box Logan at range or he tries to throw punches and combinations, Logan's going to have that opportunity to knock him out, which then Dylan loses his cool card and potentially 
loses his credibility in the MMA scene or as a fighter itself. And I'm not saying he gets an excuse for that, by the way. You signed up to box. This is, this is what you signed the dotted line to do. It doesn't matter if you're not the best boxer now, but you signed up to try to win a fight. And the fact that you signed your name there and then went in there to survive the fight and go high guard is what frustrates me about Dylan here because let's be honest, the man that Dylan looks up to, the man that was giving Dylan praise for putting on a great show, Conor McGregor would not do what Dylan did in this fight. He wouldn't just come with a high guard and look to just survive. And granted, yes, Conor is levels above Dylan as a striker. I understand that. But what Connor came into the ring with Floyd Mayweather and did, and this is a pretty decent one-to-one -one comparison, but even more so slanted against Connor than it was Dylan in the skill and technical department here. Connor came in to beat Floyd Mayweather. He didn't do that, and a lot of people knew that wasn't going to happen, but he didn't come in to just stand there and let Floyd tee off on him and go, ha ha, I survived. He wasn't afraid of looking stupid. He wasn't afraid of failing. He wasn't afraid of being of his fighter toughness or code being questioned by the world after losing to Floyd Mayweather. So he went out and tried to win that fight. That's why we respect Conor McGregor, even though he didn't win it. That's why we respected that performance, that he had some success in it, that we look back on it and go, Conor landed more shots technically than Canelo did. And he's respected for that moment. Whereas Dylan will look back on this fight and go, yeah, you stepped in there, but you only just showed up. You didn't take this fight seriously in preparation, and you didn't take it seriously in the ring. And it's evidenced by what Dylan's tactics were, right? You see him shooting in on single legs, I think in round four, to try to, again, win the MMA argument style fight here. Like, oh, I can't box you, but I can do this. And he fails. He doesn't get to take down. So that's 0 for 1 for the MMA guy. And then... At the end of one of the rounds in the fight, he tries to go guillotine, and the referee's like, what the fuck are you doing? Let go of him. So that's 0 for 2 on the MMA side of things. And then, of course, at the end of the fight, you have Dylan trying to jump into a guillotine again and falls off of Logan because what are you doing? And Logan throws a hammer fist down on him, so he's 0 for 3 in the MMA side of this thing, too. You know what it felt like? It felt like Dylan doing Nate Diaz cosplay. That's what it felt like. Again, when Nate fought Jake, he was looking to win that fight. And sure, he took little moments and he would look at the crowd and he would wrap up that guillotine and put his hands up like, ah, if it was a real fight, I would do it. But that was in the moment. It wasn't something that he was like, oh, I'm gonna guillotine you, watch out, it's gonna happen. And then tries to then do it to prove what they said at the press conference that they're a real fighter. No, it was in the moment, it was organic, it was natural, it was something that fell right into Nate's lap, so he took it. It was so forced to watch him try to prove he was like the MMA fighter and then watch him fail to do all the things that should make him an MMA fighter. And this is why I said this was a complete train wreck because in the midst of a boxing match, you have Dylan shooting in on a takedown. You have security coming into the ring at certain aspects of it because again, Dylan is doing things that are not boxing. And I know that people had questions about if the security jumps in, is that a disqualification or what happens there? I'm sure, I don't know this to be fact, but I'm sure there was something in Dylan's contract that was like, yo, if you try to take him down, if you try to do any jujitsu, or if you try to do anything that breaks the Marcus of Queensberry rules, that you forfeit the fight or in some way will be penalized for it. And Logan having his personal security in the corner in case that happened is a little odd, but it wasn't just Logan's security that multiple times was like either entering the ring or planning to. It was also event security. So I don't know how you would disqualify Logan for event security entering. The it's ring. still a little bit of a gray area. Apparently they're appealing this, but the fact that they're trying to appeal to Logan's security entering the ring and winning on a technicality, again, Dylan Dennis, the fighter, doesn't look very great doing things like that. And with Dylan not really offering much resistance, Logan just steamrolled him. Flat out, 6-0 victory here. It wasn't, again, the most entertaining fight because two people have to engage in the fight. Dylan was purposely not engaging in the fight to, again, save face, not get knocked out, be able to say that Logan didn't knock him out and he can bounce to MMA. I don't know. But regardless, it made this fight not very fun to watch. At least in the main event, you could say it's a bad fight. You could say, okay, it wasn't KSI and Tommy wasn't the highest level boxing, but two guys came in there to win. Two guys signed a dotted line, said, I'm going to try to win in this competition and went out and tried to do that. That didn't happen in the co-main. Logan came in, did his part. Dylan just flat out didn't. So I'm just going to say this now. I, I don't think I ever want to see Dylan in a boxing ring ever again. I don't want to see him in influencer boxing. And this is the same reason when I went on Bradley Martin's show and said, I want to see Dylan in MMA. Do you want to know why that is? Because he will take that seriously. And Dylan's such a high-level martial artist that 
His pride is put into that. The things that he cares about, the things he values about himself are in that sport that he has no other choice than to take it seriously. This is his legacy. This is what he wants to be, a world champ, all those things. So he'll take that seriously. And I'll watch him do that because I'm interested in competition. Sure, I'm interested in the buildup. Of course, there needs to be a story there. But the story pays off when fighters get in the ring and fight. And that is why when the entire world, MMA world, casual world, all the people that Dylan enthralled in this fight and Logan too, looked at this fight, they went, what the fuck are we watching? So yeah, there's that. Um, I don't know, man. I just, I'm, I'm frustrated because I know the potential that we could have had with that fight. And honestly, the potential of Logan Paul seems like he's set in stone with his style. And I wish that he would just add some of the fundamentals back into it because I know he could be one of the best in this scene. And like I said, yeah, I'm still interested in watching Dylan do MMA and, and potentially now with the UFC. Because CBS and Showtime looks like they're out of the combat sports business, which means Bellator is out of the combat sports business. But the big story that I take away from this is that a lot of people saw this fight. And this is a real opportunity for influencer boxing to be taken a little more seriously like if the skills aren't great okay if it's not necessarily pro level boxing whatever but at least we could show the world that we take ourselves seriously enough to fight and to try to win I, it's crazy that i have to say this but i will reiterate it for anyone that comes into the influencer boxing scene please take that part of it seriously because it deserves that respect that ring regardless if you're a pro or not and I, again having to say this to the pro fighter is crazy this sport demands your respect because again sure it's entertainment but it's dangerous and if we're going to get in and fight the intent to win in competition has to be there otherwise what the fuck are we doing let's just do influencer wwe let's do influencer anything else because competition is the root of this entertainment is number one as far as bringing those eyes but keeping them is competition if you're not going to do that don't do influencer boxing. That's my thoughts on this thing, man. Uh, I just, I didn't even want to do a video on it. That's how sick of it I was after watching the fight. Like, what did we expect? But comment section, you let me know. What do you want to see from both these guys next? Do you want to see Dylan come back and do influencer boxing? Do you want to see Logan come back and fight someone? I don't know who it would be. Le'Veon Bell is my only choice right now, but I don't think Logan is too keen on it. But I don't have those answers. All I know is... That was a massive swing and a miss for influencer boxing in that co-main event because, like I said, whatever you want to say about the rest of the card, everyone else tried, except the guy that called himself a fight. So while Logan gets the 6-0 sweep, it did leave a little bit to be desired. What happens next for everyone involved? I don't have those answers, but I guess we'll find out. <laughs>